time about business level strategy. So, just to have you a recap, so last time um, about business level strategy, it focuses on the operational um, strategy of the business. Okay? So, now we will tackle about Chapter 6, Corporate Level Strategies. So, naman, it pertains or it um, focuses on the upper management or on the top management of an organization. So, before anything else, can you please read the learning objectives, honey? Learning objectives. After the completion of this module, students will be able to understand the corporate strategy and identify its com competence. Number two, determine the, di the different approaches to corporate to corporate strategy development, and three, explain how corporate strategies could add value to a corporation. Okay, thank you, honey. So, plus, these are the learning um, of, um, topics or um, learning points that you should be able to acquire at the end of our discussion. Okay, I hope you are still taking down notes. First, um, what is corporate level um, strategy? So when we say corporate level strategy, this is the overall approach to gaining a competitive advantage by operating in several businesses simultaneously. So corporate strategy means a company's vision and tactics to out outperform its competition. So when we say corporate level strategy, as mentioned, this is about the top management making decisions on how are they going to um, retain the sustainability of their business. Ibig sabihin, paano lalawak, paano lalaki, or paano tatagal yung mga negosyo nila. So, kung ang business level strategy last time diniscuss natin is about operational um, work inside the organization, yung mga ginagawa ng different departments. Sa corporate level strategy naman, yung mga ginagawa ng mga nasa upper management, yung mga president, vice president, yung mga stockholders, ano yung vision nila or ano yung plano nila for their businesses in order for um, those businesses to sustain in the long run or para tumagal ng mas mahabang panahon. Now, meron tayong four components of corporate level strategy class. The first one is what we call visioning. When we say visioning class, tinitingnan nyo yung lawak ng pwedeng maabot ng business nyo or pwedeng puntahan ng business nyo. Second, objective setting. Ibig sabihin ng objective, bakit nyo ba tinayo tong business na to? Class, if you uh, notice, paulit-ulit lang naman siya or pinapaikot-ikot lang siya sa bawat chapter natin. Yung objectives, yung mission, yung vision. So when we say objective setting, these are the things that you are uh, trying to achieve in the long run or in the uh, given timelines. Ito yung mga bagay na gusto mong ma-achieve for your business or for your organization. Seco, uh, third is allocation of resources. When we say allocation of resources, you are acquiring or you are getting equipments, machineries, um, materials, employees, manpower, human resources, so, ito yung tinatawag nating resources, yung mga bagay na kakailanganin mo para mapatakbo mo yung business mo or yung organization mo. And lastly, strategic trade-off. When we say strategic trade-off, um, yung mga hakbang na ginagawa mo pag hindi na nagpupulfill yung isang business mo or yung isang branch mo. Willing ka ba na isara na siya tapos mag magbukas ka na lang ng panibagong business? Or willing ka ba na palitan siya ng panibagong ideas or ng panibagong concept na sa tingin mo ay mas kikita. So, these are the components of corporate level strategies. Now, um, isa-isahin natin or um, i-explain natin siya elaborately. When we say allocation of resources class, so as mentioned, it focuses on two resources, people and capital. Lagi niya siyang tatandaan. People, ibig sabihin, human resources, lahat ng tao nagagalaw inside your organization or inside your business. And yung pangalawa, yung capital or yung money na pwede mong magamit pambili ng mga materials or ng mga equipments na gagamitin mo for your company or for your business. So, key factors related to the allocation of resources are people. So, empleyado. So, 
may mga gumagalaw inside your organization. So, these are the people prioritizing their roles and responsibilities um, inside the organization. Capital. So, allocating capital across businesses so to it earns the highest risk-adjusted return. So, nag-allocate kayo ng budget sa iba't ibang branches para sa pagpapromote or pag sa strategize paano kayo mas kikita ng malaki sa business nyo. And you are also analyzing um, external opportunities. When you say um, external opportunities, magpa-franchise ba kayo? Magtatayo ba kayo ng another branch? Or makikipag-partner ba kayo sa ibang companies related to your products and services? Next is organizational design. So what do we mean by organizational design class? Ibig sabihin, ito yung structure ng kumpanya nyo or ito yung um, organizational chart nyo. Meron ba kayong president, vice president, department managers, managers, supervisor, rank and file, assistants. So, from the highest level, going to the bottom level. Yun yung tinatawag nating organizational design. Yung structure ng trabaho inside the organization. Ngayon, ano yung mga factors related to organizational design class? Una, head office. Yung head office nyo ba centralized or decentralized? For example, meron kayong sampung branches. Yung pagpapatakbo nyo ba sa lahat ng sampung branches na yun pare-parehas? Or per branch, merong certain rules and regulations. So, yun yung tinatawag natin, centralized versus decentralized. Pag sinabing centralized, lahat ng branches pare-parehas ng rules and regulations. Pag decentralized, iba't ibang branches, iba't iba ng rules and regulations. So, next is organizational structure. When we say organizational structure, structure class, kanino nagre-report yung mga empleyado? Nagre-report ba yung empleyado sa managers or direct, diretso na sa general managers? Or bago ka mag-report sa general managers, kailangan dadaan ka muna sa managers. Tapos bago ka makarating sa managers, sa supervisor muna. So may escalation ng responsibilities or ng task. Okay. Next, portfolio management. When we say portfolio management, Um, portfolio management looks at the way business units complement each other, their correlations, and decides where the firm will play. Pag sinabing portfolio management, ano ba talaga yung ina-offer ng business mo? Focus ka ba sa airlines? Focus ka ba sa hotels? Focus ka ba sa travel agency? Or focus ka sa event? Kailangan ma-identify mo yung uniqueness ng business mo. Hindi pwedeng nag-offer ka ng airlines, nag-offer ka ng hotel, nag-offer ka ng travel agency, nag-offer ka ng events. So, kailangan ma-identify ano ba yung ina-offer mong products and services. May certainty or may uniqueness. So, ano yung um, corporate strategy related to portfolio management class? Una, you are deciding what business to be in or to be out. Mag-iisip ka or gagawin mo, ano ba yung mga business ventures na pwede kong gawin or Uh, mag-raise ako ng capital or ng pera or itong business ba to, papatok ba to or hindi. So, kailangan you should create your decision making um, before venturing out to every business. Next, managing risk through diversification. When we say di diversification class, marami kang options, marami kang alternatives. Hindi ka lang focus sa isang variant. Sa halimbawa, coffee lang yung ino-offer mo. So, dapat nag-offer ka din ng Um, kung ba, coffee yung ina-offer mo, hindi pwede nga i-offer mo lang sa coffee cappuccino. Dapat you are offering different flavors or different um, variants to your clients. Monitoring the competitive landscape and ensuring the portfolio is well-balanced relative to the trends in the market. Dapat kung ano yung trending sa merkado or sa business, yun yung ginagawa mo or doon ka nagpo-focus, doon ka nagbibigay ng iyong attention. Because if that certain products and services are very trending as long as may connection siya sa business mo. So, dapat um, pinapollow mo yon. Next, strategic trade-offs. When we say strategic trade-offs class, so, aalamin mo kung ano yung mga businesses or yung mga ventures na pwede mong i-give up versus dun sa mga ventures or sa mga businesses na pwede mong um, ituloy or i-pursue. So, kailangan mong malaman or ma-weigh in mo, eh, ito, wag na lang muna ngayong summer kasi hindi naman siya patok eh. 
ang pasok ngayon yung mga resorts, yung mga um, swimming pools and um, leisure activities. Hindi muna tayo dito papasok sa mga ganitong activities kasi hindi siya for summer. Ay ngayon tag-ulan, so ito yung bagay. Pwede tayo mag-offer ng, sa restaurant natin ng mga soup, ng mga delicacies for um, rainy season. So that's what we call strategic trade-offs. You should know what, where, and when will you give up a certain business as long as you know na hindi siya fit to your um, corporate strategy. Main factors to consider strategic for strategic trade-offs class. First is managing risk. Siyempre, paano pala yung um, pinagpalit mo, yung hindi mo tinuloy na business, yun pala yung biglang nag-boom. So, ano nang gagawin mo? Ano nang plano mo? So, meron ka dapat um, contingency plan to manage the risk na ginawa mo. So, yun din. Yung ibang companies din, medyo copycat sila. Yung strategy nila, nagaya-gaya sila. So, dapat hindi kayo copycat or hindi kayo gaya-gaya dun sa ibang company lang. Dapat, you should know how to customize or innovate using your own strategy. General, generating returns. Paano kayo makakapag-collect ng revenue or ng money? So, swinging for the fences will lead to more home runs and more strikeouts. So, it is important to have the appropriate number of options in the portfolio. So, in order for you to generate returns, as mentioned, you should know what are the products and services na trending in the market or yung mga preferences ng consumers nyo. So, by knowing that, you, you will uh, know how are you going to generate your returns. And lastly, incentives. So, dapat magbibigay rin kayo ng prices or ng incentives to your employees in order for them to um, work um, effectively and efficiently. Next, four main organizational strategies class. Una, international um, strategies. When we say international strategies class, nagtatayo kayo ng iba't ibang business sa buong mundo or sa iba't ibang bansa. Yun yung tinatawag nating international. Meron kayong branches um, um, sa iba't ibang bansa or on other parts of the world. Next, multinational or multi-domestic. When we say multinational or multi-domestic, for example, in the Philippines, meron kayong 15 branches or 20 branches. So, um, domestic pa lang, nasa Pilipinas pa lang kayo eh. So, ngayon, um, since marami kayong branches, kaya ang tawag sa uh, strategy nyo ay multinational or multi-domestic. Basta hindi lumalabas inside your own country, tawag doon multinational or multi-domestic. Next is, uh, sorry, class, pag sinabi natin international pala, sorry, when we say international, um, yung may-ari ng company ay um Nag ah, sorry, yung business nyo nandito sa bansa natin, sa Philippines. Pero yung may-ari ng company ay nasa ibang bansa. That's why it is being called as international company. Yung multinational or multi-domestic naman class is nandito lang kayo sa bansa natin and then yung business mo nandito lang sa bansa natin pero maraming branches. So merong sampung branches sa Pilipinas. So ang tawag doon multinational or multi domestic. Next naman is global. When we say global class, ito yung um, company or organizations na merong sa iba't ibang branches sa buong mundo. So kung meron tayong 200 countries, meron silang branches in the 200 countries around the world. So yun yung tinatawag nating global. And lastly, transnational. When we say um, transnational class, hindi pa kayo nagsiset up ng um, businesses or ng organization, kailangan nyo munang mag-research kung saang bansa nyo siya ilalagay or kung saang location nyo siya ilalagay. Mamimili pa kayo from its word trans. So, um, transition, papalit-palit, depende kung saang bansa patok yung products and services nyo. Um, Doon nyo siya ilalagay. So, that's the four components of the organizational strategy. Okay? So, that's the end of our discussion.